Across the country, rock steady boxing classes are packed. I come almost every single day, and sometimes I come twice a day. But it's a fitness class nobody hopes to have to join for people living with Parkinson's disease. When the word got out about what we were doing, we had hundreds and hundreds of fighters. Parkinson's causes tremors and muscle stiffness. Many patients end up in wheelchairs. And it's the fastest growing neurological disease in the world. 90,000 Americans will receive a Parkinson's diagnosis this year as the population ages. Nearly a million are already living with it. I love to bake. Marilyn Raimondi is one of them. I was told it's a very slow moving disease, but it's not going to go away. Raimondi grew up in Pittsburgh at a time when factories made half the nation steel, but belched pollutants into the air. Children close to the factories played in a cloud of smog and coal dust. You'd see the snow, you'd see a layer of dust. And we had no idea what it was. We were just having fun. Those children are now senior citizens, and many have Parkinson's. We never, never realizing that this might be dangerous to us. This area is a hot spot. According to a study published in Nature, the number of people with Parkinson's is among the highest in the country. In some places, more than quadruple the estimated national average. It's part of what some scientists are calling the Parkinson's Belt, a series of regions in the U.S. with unusually high rates of the disease. Exactly why people get Parkinson's is still a big mystery. One study found that redheads could be more likely to get the disease, while others show smokers less so. And researchers don't know why, but they do think environmental factors play a major role in who gets Parkinson's. Exactly which and how much, still unclear. If Parkinson's disease were just due to chance, you wouldn't expect to see Parts of the country or parts of the world have higher rates than other parts. Dr. Ray Dorsey is a professor of neurology at the University of Rochester. He believes chemicals used in manufacturing and agriculture trigger the disease, even if the factories and farms are long gone. Pittsburgh's obviously had high levels of uh, industrial air pollution. It has contaminated with this chemical that's been used for degreasing and dry cleaning called trichloroethylene or TCE, a chemical still used today, though the EPA has proposed a rule to ban it. Both scientifically and clinically. Here in and, Pittsburgh, uh, Dr. Tim Greenemeyer has undertaken groundbreaking that. research into the environmental factors that are thought to contribute to Parkinson's. So what everybody is working on, including my lab, is trying to find out what's causing the underlying disease. Dr. Greenemeyer has intimate knowledge of Parkinson's symptoms. Uh, yeah. He was diagnosed with it in 2021. Early in his career, he was researching a naturally occurring chemical used in pesticides called rotenone. Uh, I was probably a little careless and expose myself to rotenone in particularly bad ways. And uh, my guess is that my laboratory work with, with uh, making a model of Parkinson's disease led to my getting Parkinson's disease. There is still much research to do, but his work helped lead to the discovery of another Parkinson's belt. In California's Central Valley, dubbed by some scientists and environmentalists as Parkinson's Alley. Here, widely used pesticides are strongly linked to Parkinson's. There's clear-cut epidemiology showing the exact use of pesticides in terms of how many pounds per acre, which specific areas got uh, treated with what pesticides and what the incidence of Parkinson's disease is that correlates with that. Scientists think genetics account for about a quarter to a third of the reason people get Parkinson's. That means 70 percent is unexplained and presumably environmental. The hope that learning about the disease could help prevent and treat it. But there is no cure, and doctors have been prescribing the same two-drug cocktail to mask the symptoms for decades. But it doesn't treat or stop the progress. And eventually, they stop working as well. You lift one foot as you go down. For now, exercise is key for slowing the progression of this debilitating diagnosis, doctors say. I do it every day, and I don't veer from my, my, my regular schedule. You can make time for it if you want to, and it's, I feel it's really helpful. Come on, Adele. And back at Rocksteady, it's the community that helps as well. Here, you're not alone. Everybody's in the same boat, everybody has Parkinson's, and this has become a family for me. A family desperately in need of a cure. Yasmin Vesugian, NBC News.
Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.